Hi everyone, I am Dr. Lata Tamil Chilvan, Professor, Department of Information Technology, B.S. Abdur Rahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology. Today, I am going to handle ad hoc on-demand distance vector routing protocol and its security issues. Coming to the outline, first I am going to talk about a brief introduction, then classification, then working principles of AODV, types of attacks in AODV. So the primary goal of any routing protocol is to establish a correct and efficient route between nodes. So in ad hoc routing protocol is to establish a route between wireless nodes. So that is a very challenging task because of its characteristics like self-configuring, dynamic topology and often need multiple hops to reach a particular destination. We can classify this ad hoc routing protocols into proactive, reactive and hybrid. So uh, now we'll move to the proactive routing protocols. It is also called table driven routing protocols. So traditional routing that is LSR, link state routing as well as DVR, distance vector routing follow this uh, proactive protocols. Uh, this is mainly because from the name itself we can easily say to reach any destination in a particular environment we need to have a route to the particular table that is before the data is sent to the particular destination we need to have we need to create the particular table so each node knows the route to all other nodes in the network based on the periodic updates it maintain the route between every host pair at all times but when we talk about the ad hoc uh, proactive routing protocols the main problem here is uh, bandwidth constraint we all know ad hoc means uh, ad hoc networks uh, have a bandwidth constraint uh, problems so maintaining of routing table requires much bandwidth and then because of its dynamic topology much of the routing information is never used so a lot of capacity is wasted over here and then high routing overhead so example for this proactive protocols is destination sequence distance vector and wireless routing protocol moving to the reactive protocol we can also call this as a on demand routing protocols this is mainly used to eliminate the overhead involved in the proactive protocols here reactive routes are created whenever needed so source initiate a root discovery process and before a packet is sent a root discovery is performed over here so the main advantage of this reactive protocol is only required routes are maintained and then uh, moving to the disadvantage here delay before the first packet can be sent and root discovery usually uh, involves lot of flooding so the example for reactive protocols are AODV that is ad hoc on demand distance vector routing and then dynamic source routing and associative based routing. So uh, hybrid protocols is the third category. So here it is nothing but a combination of proactive and reactive. So it means it, it is adaptive in nature. So the example for hybrid protocols are zone routing protocol and TORA temporarily ordered routing protocol. Now we will see the working principle, one of the on-demand distance vector routing protocol AODV. So uh, AODV uh, is a dynamic as well as self-starting multi-hop routing between participating mobile nodes uh, that wish to establish and maintain an ad hoc routing. The basic message set consists of hello packet, root request, root reply and root error. And then the terminology we need to know before coming to the working principles are the two important terminology sequence number and freshness of nodes. So uh, sequence number is the monotonically increasing number and then the freshness of node that will determine which node uh, to the destination is the active node. So uh, here uh, this diagram shows the propagation of root request from source to the destination. Here we have uh, A to uh, E nodes. So A is a source node and E is the destination node. If A want to send data to the destination E, then what it will do? First, each and every node maintain two tables. One is called a hello table. That is, we can also call this table as a neighboring table. And another one table is the routing table. So 
So before uh, the source initiate a route discovery to the destination, first it will check its routing table, whether it has any route to the particular destination or not. If it has a route to the particular destination, it will take and immediately uh, send the data to the uh, particular destination via that route. Or otherwise, what it will do, it check its neighboring table. So neighboring table, as I already mentioned, is nothing but the hello table. So it will send hello message to its range. So those whoever hear that particular range will give a reply, root reply with the time to live equal to one. This message is used for broadcasting connectivity information. A node should use hello message only if it is a part of an active route. So those who will give the reply will updated in the particular source table. Then uh, we'll move to the root uh, request message. So if a so, uh, route to the destination is available, it starts sending the data or otherwise if the route discovery process is initiated by generating a root request packet. And then broadcast the root request packet to all of its uh, neighboring node. Uh, here in this diagram, the neighboring nodes are B, C and D. So what the node B will do, being a neighbor, first it will, once it receives the route request from A, it will check its routing table, whether it has a route to the destination or not. If it has a route, then it will check the sequence number. I already told the sequence number is the uh, used to mainly find out the freshness of information. So here, the thing is, uh, the route, uh, it will check the routing table and if it has a route, the sequence number Number must be greater than whatever sequence number available in the root request packet. So in that case also it can give a reply or otherwise if it is equal, the sequence number is equal in the root request packet as well as that stored in the table of B, then that time also it can give a reply to A or otherwise it will simply forward the message to the remaining root. So this is the duty of the intermediate node. And then uh, we're moving to the destination node. So uh, this process is continued until it reaches the destination. Suppose uh, if E is the destination and then what it will do, the root uh, request reaches the destination node. The destination node is made available by unicasting a root reply back to the source node. So a node generate a root reply if it is the destination at the same time it has the active route to the destination it means the fresh enough route is an unexpired route entry for the destination whose associated sequence number is at least as great as that contained in the route request so and then what it will do it increment its own sequence number and then give a reply to the source node here it is the a and then we have another one type of message format called the root error message so the root error message is broadcasted when a node detects that a link with adjacent neighbor is uh, not available or if it gets a data packet desti destinated to a node for which it doesn't have an active route. And then third point is if it receives a root error from its neighbor for one or more active routes. So in all these cases it will send back the root error message to the source. All the nodes directly using the broken link get a root error packet. Then those nodes send the root error packet to, to their preceder nodes. This is continued all the way to reach the source node. In AODV, root is established and maintained by the root maintenance procedure. The root is maintained until either one of the nodes along the root become inaccessible or the root is no longer desirable. So now we'll move to the types of attack. So we have many important types of attack in uh, AODV because even though AODV is a very good protocol to start with, they didn't concentrate on the uh, security issues uh, of in their working principle. So we have many kind of attacks. One such attack is a black hole attack. So black hole attack is a kind of denial of service attack where a malicious node can attract all the packet by falsely claiming a fresh route to the destination and then absorb them without forwarding to the destination. So according to original AODV protocol, any intermediate node may respond to root request message if it has fresh enough root. This mechanism is used to decrease the routing delay but the attacker utilizes this particular property and what they try to do without checking their routing table, simply they will give a reply message to the source node. So once the source node receive any kind of reply, so it starts sending the data. So the malicious node easily disturbs the function of the routing protocol and makes at least part of the network to crash because it won't forward that particular data to the next node. So this is a typical scenario. 
So now the A want to uh, send data to the destination node D. Here B and malicious node are ABUS of A. So A first send the root request packet to B as well as M. B has, uh, I mean M has no intention to check whether any route to the destination or not. So immediately it will give a reply. This uh, this line is the root reply. So it will give a reply to A. So A, A starts sending the data uh, to the malicious node. Simply it will observe, it won't forward the data. This particular attack is called the black hole attack and then another one important attack is the rushing attack it is a malicious attack that is directed again on demand routing protocols that use duplicate suppression at each node here the rushing attacker can forward the root rediscovery or root request more quickly than the authenticated node thus the chances of selecting a path that includes in the attacker list is increases so this is the example for the rushing attack here the the source will send the data to the destination in between we have a malicious node so it has no intention it will select group of persons and immediately forward the request to the destination and being a active play a active role in this particular environment routing protocol in mobile ad hoc network is a challenging issue because of its network frequent topological changes vulnerable medium constrained bandwidth and limited power a routing approach would show high degree of adaptability with respect to the very dynamics of the network designing a security protocol for ad hoc routing protocol is a very challenging task to provide such a security in aodv a few new procedures could be incorporated to make it more secure against a few types of attack so this is the reference i uh, used ad hoc on demand distance vector routing by perkins